All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. The viewfinder is at the top of the computer. I'm going to look straight ahead. So that's not why I'm, or that's why I'm not making eye contact with the camera. This Mac has it all the way on the top for some weird reason. So with that aside, I want to talk a little bit about alcoholism and the trap of alcoholism and how how easy it can get sucked into a situation where before you know it, you're drinking a lot of booze. And once you start drinking a lot of booze, you guys, you get yourself into a lot of trouble. And I'm not talking about like three beers every night or, you know, a six pack every night, which can get you into some trouble. I'm talking about drinking hard liquor, vodka, absinthe, whiskey, you name it, in abundance, which is something that I did for a very long time. And it's just, it's such a weird thing to look back at my drinking because there's good portions of it that I don't even remember at this point. You know how it is when you drink a lot of alcohol. Things become a fog and the separation of days kind of becomes thinned and before you know it you've got like this entire timeline timeline of information that you don't even remember and one day kind of slips into the next when you're an addict and you end up losing a lot of time because of that because you don't have control over your functions. You don't have control over your life even though at the time you might think you do. So one day becomes the next. And before you know it, you're deep into your addiction and you've lost a lot of time, a lot of time. And the scary thing about losing time to addiction is that every day you give into your addiction, depending on the substance, you make the ability to get off of the substance that much more difficult, especially with alcohol, because Although alcohol is legal, it is one of the most dangerous substances in the world. Imagine that. Cannabis is illegal in many states. Again, cannabis is illegal in many states. But every state in the United States, you can go buy alcohol. And you can even go buy it at, uh, you know, you can buy it at grocery stores. You can buy it at supermarkets, which, again, a... a a grocery store, excuse me. You can buy it at gas stations. You can buy it at Quickie Marts. You can pretty much get alcohol anywhere within a five minute drive as long as you're in a major city. That's a little concerning to me considering how many people alcohol kills every year. Many people get behind a wheel after they've drank a little too much and end up killing a family and nine times out of ten the driver that was drunk ends up living. Imagine killing someone because you drank too much liquor one night and you ended up having to spend the rest of your life in jail because of that. That's pretty frightening. And there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in prison cells right now who have done so. So my suggestion right now from the get-go before we start this video is that if you drink alcohol and you're an addict and you drink so much that you, you know you're, it's out of control, if you do stupid shit like I used to do when you drink and, you know, harm people and break objects and get arrested, you might want to use this video as a warning call, a warning alarm, and a path towards getting sober. Some of my best videos on YouTube in terms of performance and views are videos on alcoholism. A lot of people are struggling with this demon, and it is a demon. If there ever was a demon, it would be alcohol, folks. So, last night I was on YouTube and I decided to type my name into the search engine on YouTube and I scrolled through just to see what came up. And in a section on the bottom or towards the bottom of the first page, it had a section called uh, People Also Watch. And there was this man on there giving his alcohol withdrawal testimonial and it, this video can be found in the first link in the description box. I would highly suggest watching that. Because I've had many experiences with alcohol that are very similar to this man's testimonial, and it's bone-chillingly eerie to hear him talk about what he went through when he decided to quit booze. And, you know, throughout the video, the man was like, oh, you know, you can call me crazy for saying this is what happened, but I can assure you this is exactly what happened. And, you know, to an outsider, to, to someone who's never gone through serious alcohol withdrawals, some of the things that I've talked about on my videos about withdrawal, the hallucinations, the, the you know, derealization, to outsiders, 
this stuff might seem totally like, I don't want to say bogus, but like crazy. Like the man said in the video, he kept saying, you know, I put this on my grave. This is exactly what happened, blah, blah, blah. Um, so folks, there is a, long story short, there is a demonic element to alcoholism. And this video, if you watch it, he hits the nail right on the head. I at one point got chills while he was talking about what he was going through when he was going through the withdrawals. Because again, I've been in similar territory and to hear him so eloquently describe his withdrawal symptoms had this effect on my mind where I temporarily relived in the flash of an eye some of the stupidest things I've done while drunk and also some of the withdrawals that I had, which were ridiculously insane and frightening. So when I decided to get rid of the booze, it was because if I remember properly, properly and again, it's been a long time, so forgive me if I don't remember all this, but it was because I didn't have any money to go buy more alcohol. My bank account was, you know, overdrafted, I think like three or four times because of some charges that all landed right around the same time. And I didn't have any money to buy alcohol. So I remember at the time I had been drinking for like three days straight. And I remember I had a big old fifth of vodka that I had finished within like a, maybe like a six hour period. And then I went to, after I noticed my bank account was withdrawn or overdrafted, excuse me. I remember like digging through my pockets and like finding a, an actual physical dollar bill and like digging through my pockets to just try to find like $4 for a pint of, of, of taco, uh, vodka or Royal gate, whatever it was cheapest. Usually these are under four dollars or right around four dollars. And I remember going into the liquor store, and the man rang, rang me up, and it was like four twenty-five or four fifty, and I had like three forty. And, you know, like pulling the dollar bill out and just having a bunch of chains and chain change and even like a bunch of pennies. I put it all on the the counter and like meticulously counted it out in front of him, and he knew I was an alcoholic. <laughs> when you start buying liquor. Folks, with pennies, there's a good chance you have a problem. Again, when you start buying liquor with pennies, there's a good chance you have a problem. And it's incredibly embarrassing. Like, okay, I'm going to count out 100 pennies for you. And here's 10 dimes. And here's a bunch of nickels. Can I have my, fit, or my pint now? I need to go get drunk. I'm an alcoholic. That's basically what you're saying when you buy liquor like that. So I didn't have the money to buy the alcohol. And I, if I remember properly, I, I was so pissed that I couldn't drink and I knew I wasn't going to be able to get booze that I took that wad of change and walked out of the liquor store and just threw it at, into the parking lot and just stormed off in anger. And it wasn't until hour later, hours later when all of a sudden I felt this click. And I don't mean like a physical click in my head or anything, but like reality just like boom, shifted. It was kind of like w when you have a slide machine that they used to use in school where it was a circular disc and you put all the slides in and you click the button and it goes pink and it goes to the next slide to project onto the projector screen. Everything was fine. I was angry because I couldn't drink, but ev you know everything was fine for the most part. I wasn't going in through any withdrawals. I wasn't necessarily feeling um, weird or anything. I just felt angry. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, reality just phew, shifted. And I felt so absolutely fucking strange when that happened. I remember feeling all these tingles on my skin. And it almost felt like the room was slowly moving. My heart started pounding. You know, I started flushing. Like my skin started getting really hot and I was sweating. And I knew then that something bad was about to happen. At the time, I thought I was having like a, I don't know, about to have a heart attack because I had drank so much. Again, I was just coming off a three-day binge of just being drunk the whole time and sleeping through half of it. The whole thing is a fog. And I remember just freaking out and leaving the room and going out front and just pacing back and forth in the front yard of where I was at the time because I wasn't home in California. I was, I was in California, but I wasn't at my parents' house at the time where I was staying at that, you know, when I was younger. And I was just like, 
all these crazy thoughts started going through my head, just like all this worry and, you know, I kind of shook it off to the best of my ability, but I felt fucking weird. I felt out of control. I felt like something was overtaking me. And I remember thinking, God, I need to get alcohol. You know, I just threw all that change on the ground and I don't have any money at all. I have a dollar now. I didn't throw the dollar on the ground. All I have is a dollar. What the hell can I get? Like, I felt like I was going through, I felt like I needed to drink to keep the withdrawals from coming because, because I felt that that's what was going to happen. And at the same time, I had this deep feeling within me that maybe I wasn't going through withdrawals and maybe I was like, my body was priming itself for a heart attack. Maybe I drank so much in the last three days, in the last years or how multiple years that I had drank. Maybe I was about to have a heart attack and maybe if I do manage to get alcohol and I drink it, it'll kill me. So I was in between two realities. One where I thought I needed more alcohol to keep the withdrawals away, even though that's only temporary. You know, you drink, but what am I going to do? Am I going to buy like a shot of, of vodka for a dollar? Those little like airplane vodka bottles? That's not going to hold the withdrawals off. And on simultaneously, I felt that maybe what I'm going through right now, this sensation of feeling weird, isn't actually a withdrawal about to happen. Maybe it's my body shutting down. So at that point, I was like, okay, I can't do, I can't drink. But what if the withdrawals that potentially can happen from not drinking end up killing me. So that led to a state of utter confusion where I confusion where I start started to panic. My body just started flushing with 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 um with not only heat but sweat. Like it was wasn't even hot in the house or outside, but my the sweat was just pouring off my face. And when you're going through a situation like this, ladies and gentlemen, it induces panic. And if you give in to the panic enough, it makes things 10,000 times worse. And at that point, I just started going crazy. An hour or two went by before I started literally feeling like the room around me was spinning, even though it wasn't. It was very difficult for me to find my center of balance. And I was just covered with sweat. So... I didn't know what to do because I wanted to fall asleep, but I felt like if I fell asleep, I was going to die. I wasn't going to wake up. So it, it, there, it, it, what ended up happening is like this battle between opposites where I want to rest, but I feel like I fall asleep, which there was no chance in hell I was going to fall asleep being this panicked, but I wanted to, I wanted to go lay down and just lay, lay in bed. But at the same time, I didn't want to just lay in bed and be alone with my own thoughts in the silence. I wanted to move. So I paced around the house like a crazy person while my mind was racing and I was sweating and my heart was pounding and it felt like the room was moving, fumbling around, stumbling around, just trying to stay in motion so I could try to, through staying in motion, not let the silence of my mind catch up with me. When you're going through alcohol withdrawals, your mind can be your own worst enemy and it can drive you into utter hell. So I moved around the house, yada, 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 and I eventually, after however long I did this, decided to lay down in bed. And at that point, after all the moving around, all the panic, all of the praying to God to save me, I'll never drink again if you save me, yada, 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 praying to Jesus, I decided to lay down in bed. And when I laid down in bed, I felt like I sunk into the bed, down into the middle of the earth. And the the bed sheets just became covered in sweat. And at that point, you guys... I started hearing disembodied voices around the room talking back and forth between one another. And when I would try to move my head to see where the voices were coming from, there would be like these tracers that shot around the room. It's like no matter how hard I tried to focus on the origin of the voice within the room, because there was multiple around me, I couldn't seem to catch up to them and locate where these voices were originating from. So I was just sitting there in bed, covered in sweat, feeling like I'm in the middle of the earth, down deep in the bed, just trying to look around to see where these voices are coming from. And it just—it was like ping pong balls shooting around the room. And I'm I'm thinking at the time, am I dying? Am I dead? Is this what happens when you die? What the hell is going on here? And as this continued to happen, I started to see the five platonic solids in my mind's eye. Clearly, I could clearly see them. Not only, like, I don't know how to explain it because when I say my mind's eye, it almost seems like I'm saying it's like some internal vision. No. 
regardless of whether my eyes were open or closed, in, in my vision, in my head, I could see the five platonic solids spinning. You know? There would be one platonic solid that would stay and spin, and then the other one would come in. It became like this, again, like a projector moving into different pictures. But these were three-dimensional uh, visions of the platonic solids. And at that point, I saw a pyramid show up in my mind's vision, and it just started to spin. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is going on? And if I closed my eyes, you guys, if I closed my eyes... Instantly, I would be taken into a complete visual vista as if I were there. I remember closing my eyes and seeing a desert and feeling the hot wind on my face. I remember closing my eyes and being in some like weird old Victorian room where there was a party, like a ballroom going on, and I could hear the music. And I'm thinking, okay, this is it. I'm fucking dying. And I got up. And I ran to the front door with my cell phone and I managed to somehow, it took me like two minutes to open my phone because I, it's like my, I was totally just inebriated, even though I wasn't drunk. I, like my body was just going crazy without the, el uh, uh, without the alcohol. And I might managed to call my mom at the time and it had to have been like one in the morning or later. And I told her like, I can't breathe, which I couldn't at the time. I like, no matter how much I took into my lungs, I felt like I couldn't get enough. I felt like every organ in my body was shutting down. And I called her and I was like, I think I'm dying. I can't breathe. I came clean about what had happened. And she ended up breaking down in tears, thinking I was dying. And this is just increasing the, the fear and the guilt about what I've done and yada, yada, yada. Long story short, I don't want to go into the like minute details because I don't want to make this too long. I don't want to bore you, but I ended up getting back into the house and shutting the door and going back and laying in bed. And I tried closing my eyes. And every time I closed my eyes, I would see something, whether that be like a rocket shooting into outer space, whether being in outer space and seeing down at the earth, like just crazy shit, crazy fucking shit. And it was at that time that I started to see all these Egyptian deities and all these deities of antiquity and like knights in shining armor. I'm going like, what in the fuck is happening here? And at that point, my heart started pounding so hard that like it created like a drum beat that echoed through the bed that I was laying on. It was like, dun, 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 dun. And I'm going, oh my God, this is what death is like. Holy shit. And it wasn't at that until that point, if I remember properly, that I started to hear circus music. In a carousel spinning. You know carousel music at a circus? But this carousel music had a very ominous tone. And I could hear children giggling. Evil sounding children giggling. While I could not only hear the carousel music, but I could feel it. Like, it was like I was watching a carousel spin. And I could sense the, you know how the horses go up and down on the carousel. And it was absolutely insane and I could hear children talking to this carousel music and being able to sense the carousel moving I could hear them talking about how that they, they were a a group of demons who had been encouraged and I wouldn't say encouraging but they had been watching me drink for years and that they were very lucky and very happy because they thought this was the day or the night that I was going to die and they were talking back and forth about what they were going to do to my soul once it got to hell. And, you know, our plan succeeded and, you know, the master will be happy. We broke another one and all this other shit. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I can't fucking sit here and listen to this. So I got up and I go into the bathroom at the time and turn the lights on. And my skin was like a light blue purple. And I'm thinking, holy shit, I'm dying. My skin is act I'm turning blue. And I shit you not, you guys, when I tell you this. This is the exact truth. There was a rash on my body. A big purple rash right above my liver that looked like some type of... It just... It was. It looked like a rash. But the rash was undulating. It was moving. It was like it was breathing. And as I focused on the rash, as it moved on my liver, it would slowly move to other parts of my body. And at one point it went to my neck and just sat there, almost like an octopus sucking the blood out of my throat chakra or the energy out of my throat chakra. 
And this thing moved back and forth all across my body. And I'm sitting there looking in the mirror in this insane state where I'm seeing fucking platonic solids. I'm seeing deities. If I close my eyes, I'm taken into like Western scenes of antiquity. Like what the hell is going on? Am I experiencing past lives like some type of movie reel? And it was at this point that I was really broke down, broken down and I just... I got on my knees and I prayed to God that if you, if you let me live through this, I will I will take this mess that I've made and I will do something creative with it. I will try to inspire other people to get out of this mess. Because at that point, I knew, ladies and gentlemen, that there was not only... Addiction is a... It's a... There's a demonic aspect to it. I do indeed believe on some weird level, as weird as you think that this sounds... There are hierarchies of evil forces that hook people in like parasites to addictive patterns to kill them. And I think that these entities get a lot of pleasure out of doing so. Now there's a whole lot more I could say about this experience. It's 107 degrees, so I'm not going to ramble on, folks. It's not 107 degrees in this house, but... You know, I can. It is warm in this house, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this one up just by saying that there's a hell of a lot more to this story. There's a hell of a lot more to this story, folks. And it's still, no matter how I explain it, words will never describe how frightening this was and how it motivated me to change. It. There's so much more that I could say, but we're 21 minutes into this video. I want to wrap things up by saying that you have the ability to quit, but if you are an alcoholic, you need to seek medical profession, uh, professional medical help because, folks, you can go to the doctor and they can give you things like benzos, Ativan. I don't know if they prescribe Xanax or whatnot for uh, alcohol withdrawals, but these types of medicines, although I don't believe in them, because people get hooked on those as well. And benzo withdrawals are some of the worst. And you, you make... Long... Excuse me. Those types of drugs can take you out of the delirium and help you keep your mind right while you're going through these withdrawals so that you don't, like, you know, have a heart attack. Your mind can lead you to a heart attack, in my opinion. But, you know, thinking back on that, there were times where I would take clonazepam and drink... I, there was a time where I took a, a ton of clonazepam which is a benzodiazepine, one of the strongest because it has the longest half-life. I think it's like three or four days. This shit stays in your system forever and it gets stuck in your fat cells, if I remember. I took a bunch of clonazepam and drank like seven bottles of wine in one night. There were times where, there was one period of time where I drank 12 bottles of wine in less than six hours. And somehow I lived through that. And one of those times, I didn't, I think I drank like, I can't remember how many bottles of wine I drank when I took the clonazepam. But it was a lot. And I would fall asleep, and then I'd go and find more alcohol. It wasn't just wine. And I ended up sleeping for like four days straight without even knowing it. And the only things, the only thing I do remember is that like every few hours I would wake up, and I had a bottle of alcohol stashed near me, and I would just chug alcohol and go back to sleep. A four-day pathetic sleep session while mixing clonazepam and alcohol, which is one of the most absolute dangerous combinations. It can kill you, and it has killed people. It's killed thousands of people. So the key here, folks, is to not take your addiction lightly. It's to get on track immediately, seek professional medical attention, and get the fuck off of the alcohol and all the other bullshit that's doing you no good. If you want to live, you've got to start acting like you want to live. And I do not, I really do hope that you don't get put into the situation or a similar situation like me where you have to be driven near death, potential death, to see the value in changing. I love you all. I have a ton of videos in my archive about alcohol. Go check them out. Some of these stories might seem a tad contradictive as I make new ones because in prior videos, when I made videos about alcohol, I had a more lucid uh, memory on exactly what happened at the time when I went through certain, I went through withdrawals multiple times. This isn't just the only time. And I even fucked up after this. So trying to think back 
over seven years ago to remember everything that happened. It's a little bit difficult. It's a little cloudy. I'm glad I've made a bunch of videos that act like a record of sorts of my experiences because I do believe that these videos can help people change. And I know that thousands of people have been inspired to change by these videos. So I apologize if certain videos seem a little, the stories don't align perfectly as I make new ones with old videos, but I'm trying to remember it all. I've got a lot on my plate. I'm, you know, quit folks, quit drinking and change your life. Peace be with you.